Okay, ladies and gentlemen, here we go. Okay, so just going to go over some basic theory. So far, for gravitational attraction and friction. So gravity and friction. Okay, all right. So first things first. When we're looking at my three laws, of course, the most important law that we need to look at is F net equals to MA. So Newton's second law and Newton's first law. Object in inertia, so V constant, which equals to A equals to zero, which means F net equals to zero, which means your forces are equal to each other. Okay? Whether it's in the net X direction or F net Y, F net Y is also zero, which would mean Fn minus Fg equals to zero, which would mean Fn equals to Fg. Okay? All right. Now this, of course, here is your second most important thing. So you need to understand whenever you're doing a question, whether you are, uh, whether you have this scenario, whether you have this scenario, whether you have this scenario. If you don't understand those concepts, then it's going to be very, very difficult for you to solve the questions. Okay? Now, we already did the first video on gravity, so now we're looking at it in terms of friction. We said our first friction is Fk, which is kinetic friction. Okay? And kinetic friction always opposes motion. Always opposes motion. Okay, so if my F applied is moving east, then your FK is moving west. Okay, if your F applied is moving north, your FK is moving south. So, thank you, you're so kind. Okay, if F applied is moving up, then your FK is down. And what else would you have moving down? FG would also be down two forces. So it depends on the scenario. Okay. Static friction on the other hand is starting friction which means before an object starts to move. So Newton's first law, an object at rest wants to stay at rest. Okay. In this situation your velocity is zero, your acceleration is zero, your F net is also zero. So therefore your F applied maximum equals to Fs. This is maximum applied force. Okay, so I'll give you an example. Okay, so let's say the Fs mu s of an object is 0 0.5. Let's say the mass of that object is 50 kg. Okay, so mu s, which equals to Fs divided by Fn. I'm going to calculate my uh, Fs. So mu s times Fn, which equals to Fs. Now we know Fn equals to Fg, which equals to Mg. Okay in this scenario, like so. So Fn, which equals to Fg. So you're going to have 0 0.5 times uh, 50 times 9.8. Can somebody tell me what this is? What is Fs? Two hundred forty-five newtons. Now, this object, this object, which is 50 kg, will need a minimum applied force of 245 newtons for it to just start to move. If I if I only put 250, I mean 210 newtons, it will not move. Okay? If I only put 150 newtons, it will not move. 244 will not move. You need a minimum of 245 newtons for your object to just start to move. Say what? Can you? Yes, of course, if it's greater, then it's going to start moving. Yes, it, it is stationary because it's a static object. It's not moving at all right now. So if I, it's like a tree. I push against a tree. Is the tree going to go anywhere? No. But if I'm like Superman and I push it really hard, what's going to happen to the tree? It's going to move. You're going to break it off. So if your applied force is larger than the tree's static, static friction, then the tree will move. 
otherwise it will not move if it's exactly the same it will just start to move it will just start to move and that's about it you have to continue applying the force for it to go forward does that make sense okay now however that applied force of 245 newton newtons the fk and the fs will not be the same yes Yes. Mu K. Yes, there will be. And I'll tell you why. Okay, so let's do the same example. Let's change up something slightly here. Okay. So let's say we are going to change our mu. We're going to give a mu K. Okay. So we're going to say mu K for that same object on that surface that it was sliding as was only 0 0.25. Okay. So now what we're going to do is we're going to calculate my fk. We're going to say mu k times fn, which equals to fk. So 0 0.25, okay, times 50, times 9.8, which equals to fk. What is your fk? and 122.5 newtons. Well, look at that. fk is only 122. I am still pushing with the same applied force of 245 newtons. Okay, now what I'm going to do is FA minus FK, which equals to F net. Okay, FA is still 245 newtons minus 122.5, which gives you F net. What is your F net? 122.5 newtons. Okay, if I have an F net of 122.5 newtons, do, do I have an acceleration? The answer is yes. F net divided by M, which equals to A. Now what we're going to do is we're going to calculate that, that A. So we're still pushing with that same applied force of 122.5 divided by 50, which equals to acceleration. What is your acceleration? 2.45 meters per second squared. You see, that starting friction was the minimum force required to just to get to move that object, just to get it to move. Okay? Once it starts, yeah, it'll move a bit. If I don't keep on applying the same force, it'll stop. If my force goes from 245 to 240, the object will stop. It won't move. Your mu s is changing over to mu k as long as I keep on applying that same force. That's correct. That's correct. Once it starts to move, then it's fine. That's a different story. That's correct. Mu k is always going to stay constant. Mu k is dependent on the surface of the object. Okay? Mu k is dependent on the two surfaces. So the rougher the surface, the more mu k you have. The smoother surface, the less mu k you have. Yes. Yes. Yeah. No, no, because think about, look at this situation right here. Your FA is still, it's 245 newtons. You have not changed your FK. Okay, but however, let's change the scenario up a little more. So let's, can I erase this? Yeah, so imagine that same box. Okay, I got it to start to move. Okay, in the beginning. Then I knew that my mu k, or my f k, I should say, is only 122.5. So what I did is I'm not pushing it any as, as much. Just like when you get the car, when you push the car in the beginning, it takes a little longer. Once you have started the car moving, then you don't need to push as much. So once my object started moving, now what I did was instead of my f applied being uh, 245, I kept my f applied at 122.5. I changed my F applied from 245 to 122.5. But it's already moving. It accelerates in the beginning, but now it's already moving. So my F applied is 122.5, 122.5, which will give you an F net equals to 0, which gives you acceleration, which equals to 0, which gives you a velocity, which is constant. That's correct. Now it's constant velocity. Okay. In the beginning, yes, there will be an acceleration. 
But once that acceleration, once you stop giving the same force, that acceleration will decrease to constant velocity, where your applied force and your uh, frictional force are exactly the same. Okay, so imagine if I have an object moving through the air upward. Now in this scenario, what I'm, what I'm going to have is I'm going to have F applied that is moving up, Fg that's going downward, and F air friction which is going downward. If my object is moving at a constant velocity, my acceleration is zero, F net is zero, my system equation is this, F applied upward, there's my FBD, minus Fg going downward, minus FF going downward, which gives you F applied equals to Fg plus FF. And I'll give you one more scenario that we didn't talk about in class, but it's important that I talk to you about this, okay? Um, so we're going to erase this. Now imagine I'm in an elevator, okay? And I have a scale, right? So, and I'm standing on the scale, okay? And imagine this elevator is on the surface of Earth where velocity is zero, okay? So your FBD is going to look like so. It's going to be Fn on the scale and Fg downward, Fn on the scale. That's correct, you're standing on the scale. So your scale, let's say your mass was 50 kg. Okay, so your scale will say Fn, which equals to Fg, which equals to Mg, which will be 50 times 9.8, which is what? Can somebody tell me what that is? What is your Fn? How much do you weigh? 490 Newtons. So let's say we change the scenario where my object now, which is my elevator, is moving upward, let's say it's moving upward, at a constant velocity of 2.5 meters per second. Okay, what will my reading on my scale say? Will it increase? But I'm moving at a constant velocity upward. Okay, but think about it, look at it. If I'm moving upward at a constant velocity, V constant, which means acceleration is zero, which means F net is zero, which means your Fn minus Fg equals to zero, which means your Fn equals to your Fg. It will stay the same. And now, I didn't say accelerate, I said constant velocity. I did not say acceleration. Same scenario if my elevator is moving downward at a constant velocity. Again, same scenario, same example. In that one, it will be A, um, uh, A equals to zero, F net equals to zero. However, my system equation will be a little slightly different. It will be Fg minus Fn, which equals to zero. And now your Fg equals to your Fn, but still the same thing. It'll still be the same thing. Yes. Okay, so my last scenario would be, imagine I'm in that elevator again, still standing on that scale, but now my elevator is moving upward at an acceleration of 2.0 meters per second squared, accelerating. So what will my scale read? Okay, what will my scale read? And now what will happen is you're going to say, well, acceleration is this, so therefore F net equals to mass times acceleration. Now remember we said mass was 50 kg, 50 kg. So that's going to be 50 times 2, which gives you 100 newtons going upward. Okay, so we're going to say is, well, Fn minus Fg equals to 100 newtons. What will your scale say? Well, it's going to be Fn, which equals to 100 newtons plus M times G, which is 100 plus uh, 50 times 9.8. And what was 50 times 9.8 again? 490. So this is going to be 100 plus 490, which will be 590 newtons. So your scale will be slightly different. You will weigh more when your elevator is going upward. What if my elevator is accelerating downward? Now we're going to same thing again, but this time it's going to be Fg minus Fn, which equals to 100 newtons. Okay, and then you're going to say Fg minus 100, which equals to Fn, and this is going to be 490 minus 100 newtons, which equals to F, this is F, sorry, this is Fn, yeah? And your Fn will actually be 390 newtons. You will weigh less when your elevator is going downward, and you will weigh more if your elevator is moving upward. So your weight is 